Am I dead? Not yet, but you will be unless you come with us. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my Loki post credit scene video. There's so many things that they answer during this scene and so many things that they set up. It almost raises more questions than it answers, but we actually have a lot of information about what's going on here. There are a whole bunch of Easter eggs, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. We're doing a giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. I'll name a new winner at the end of this. All you have to do to enter that is just be a subscriber and leave your favorite theory about what's going on on this trash planet here. Of course, careful for spoilers for Loki Episode 4 if you haven't seen the episode yet. I'm assuming you are if you're watching this video. But in addition to a bunch of big reveals about the secret of the Timekeepers, the TVA, we also found out what it seems like is happening with all the people in the timelines that they've been erasing with their wands in the time reset devices. So it actually goes deeper than this. It's not that just other Lokis are being sent to this trash planet like a cosmic version of Sakaar. It's all the other Lokis, but also things associated with those events. Like that's how the Avengers Tower looks all ruined in the background there because they erased it with a time reset device and it got sent here. There's other trailer footage where you see this giant ship drop down and land on the ground. So clearly more than just the Lokis are being sent here when they get erased. Also, the reason why there are so many other Lokis here is because they want it to be a really cool WTF moment. Like, oh my god, look at all these comic book Lokis. But you'll also remember that back during episode 2, Mobius said more than any other type of variant, they're usually going after Lokis. So that's why there's so many Lokis here disproportionate to other people. But talking about the other big reveals, the other big questions that they answer during the end of this in the post credit scene. As Loki and Sylvie uncover the secret of the Timekeepers right at the end of the episode, that they're fake... They're animatronic. It seems like they've been faked this whole time. That's the implication. There were never any actual timekeepers in the story that Miss Minutes shows all the time travel criminals in the history of the TVA is mostly fabricated. This will be really important in a second too though. Remember what Loki said. He found out no one is ever truly evil and no one is ever truly good. So there's probably a little bit of truth to Miss Minutes story about the history of the TVA but most of it is also probably fake. That also goes hand in hand with what's happening with Renslayer as well. Like Renslayer seems like she's really evil during this episode, but as Loki said, no one is ever truly evil or truly good. But then as part of this Loki's redemption arc, his quest to not die alone, thank you very much Sif, he's seemingly about to confess his love for Sylvie and explain to her what he learned about the Nexus event that Mobius was referencing when he found them on Lamentus 1. It was all about the coming together of two versions of Loki in a loving relationship, like a true partnership. They did play those reveals during the episode like everyone in the show, those characters, think that there's a romantic aspect to it as well. Even though in this interrogation scene, Loki tries to deny it. Like, I don't love her. How dare you suggest that? Renslayer runs him through and he goes out Hex Vision style from WandaVision. Goodbye, my love. And somehow winds up on this post-apocalyptic amalgam version of Earth. It also Renslayer then tells Sylvie, just go ahead and kill me. Even though she doesn't because she wants all the secrets, tell me everything. I think Renslayer did this because she knows something about what happened to Loki because as I said, no one is ever truly good or truly evil. That'll also go hand in hand with who's really behind the TVA itself. Like it's implied that whoever's doing all this is evil, but there's the idea that no one is ever truly evil. Like they have good intentions, but they're doing really evil things. But the idea that Renslayer knows that everyone is a variant in the TVA, she also probably knows about the stuff that they're erasing, not actually getting erased. It's just getting thrown in the cosmic closet, so to speak. Like this trash planet is the show's version of Sakaar, whether it's a version of Earth in a pocket dimension, whatever planet it is they're dumping stuff on. It's where everything and everyone goes when they get erased. I think the idea though is that it is a pocket dimension and these people who are stuck here really are stuck here. Like they can't go flying around anywhere in the universe that they want. But think of the metaphor of cleaning your room when you're a little kid. Like your mom tells you that you're going to be in big trouble if you don't clean your room up. Think of your room as being the multiverse itself, the sacred timeline. So instead of putting everything where it's supposed to be because your room is a complete trash heap, you just throw everything in the closet and shut the door and wipe your hands of it. Well, job well done. See how easy that was. That's exactly what the TVA is doing here. They're just throwing everything in like a pocket dimension, like a cosmic closet. And it's kind of implied that they've been doing it this whole time. When Loki asks himself if he's in hell, that's the Asgardian version of hell, like I said in my last video. We saw a version of that when Loki was looking into Valkyrie's memories during Thor Ragnarok. It's kind of the same trick that Sylvie pulls on people when she looks into their memories. 
In the MCU, hell, H-E-L, is just another dimension like Valhalla, another state of existence. Then up walk the four Loki variants, counting Alligator Loki as a distinct Loki variant, too, because he has the crown of horns on his head. And I know people want to call him Croaky after a crocodile Loki. Technically, he's an alligator, not a crocodile, because they're two different animals. Since the episode has come out too, I haven't seen anyone find any more specific references to Alligator Loki other than to say it's just another example of something like Frog Thor. Just a Loki who was either turned into an alligator or an alligator who was turned into a Loki. If you want to make a Spider-Ham reference from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. If you're not familiar with his backstory, the joke about Spider-Ham is that he was just a normal spider who was then bitten by a radioactive pig. That's also kind of what happened with Frog Thor in the comics. Yes, there was a version of Thor that got turned into a frog. He referenced that during Thor Ragnarok, like, Loki turned me into a frog. But also as part of that story, the original comic book story, a regular frog also separately gained the powers of Thor and wielded a version of Mjolnir. So during that story, Frog Thor was actually called Throg. That was the regular frog that gained the powers of Thor. So it would be hilarious if this alligator Loki was just a regular alligator that somehow gained the powers of a Loki. Richard E. Grant is playing classic Loki with a costume based on the original Jack Kirby Journey into Mystery Loki when he first appeared in the comics. He's seemingly way older than our main Loki, so it's not clear what he did to create a Nexus event, but he's got this little bag of supplies that he's carrying here, and the fact that he's working on a team with these other Lokis implies that he's not the one that's behind the timekeepers of the TVA reveal. He's just another victim of the TVA. I'm assuming based on his scene here, the way they're presenting him, unless there's some other more evil version of Loki that's played by Richard E. Grant out there, he's just meant to be a cool cameo scene amidst all these other cool versions of Loki from the comics. Boastful Loki has a hammer here, like he's a big badass version of Loki. It could be a version of Mjolnir, like this is what the hammer looks like up close behind the scenes. He just seems like he's built to be another Thor-like version of Loki, wielding a hammer. He's super jacked, like you would expect a version of Thor to be. He's being played by Deobia Opare, who most of you might remember as Aria Hoda from Game of Thrones. They kind of did him dirty during season 5, but he's a huge dude in real life. There's no big comic book references to his character that we know of, so he's probably just meant to be a badass version of Loki that the TVA just probably thought was too dangerous to allow to exist inside the sacred timeline. Then there's Kid Loki from the comics, who winds up being a more redeemed version of Loki, working with the Young Avengers, helping save the universe before he gets co-opted by the original evil Loki and steals his body. He's being played by Jack Beale, so Kid Loki is just meant to be another more heroically aligned version of Loki, a more redeemed Loki. And because this is meant to be the Loki series version of Sakaar, like a garbage planet where all the cosmic trash gets sent, all the timeline trash gets sent that the TVA is erasing from timelines, there's also going to be other Lokis here too. Like this confirms why President Loki is here and potentially other Loki versions. President Loki is just the other biggest version that we know about from the trailers that we haven't seen in an episode yet. Also, this kind of explains what's going on with the Avengers Tower in the background. Like, this might have been from a version of the original Avengers movie where Loki wound up defeating the Avengers and New York City in general just wound up getting trashed even more. But it just seems like our Loki then teams up with these other Lokis. You see this fight scene with boastful Loki fighting and our Loki kind of ducking behind him here. Remember, per the rules established on the show earlier, no one is ever truly good or truly evil. The early theories, just based on the way they're presenting this end reveal here, I know people want another Loki to be behind all this, but the other best theory that I've seen is that it's really Miss Minutes that's running things, so to speak. Someone would have had to create her originally, and she was probably built for the express purpose of preventing another multiverse war. But think of her as like a less overtly evil version of Ultron, a living machine, a living digital consciousness. As she told Loki, she was alive, and she kind of hinted that she was always watching him. And what have you seen on a lot of those propaganda posters around the TVA? The timekeepers are always watching. And it looks completely sinister. But I use the Heimdall example. Like Heimdall is a demigod. He has the ability to see anything in the universe. But even though he's a demigod, he's super powerful. He can only focus on one thing at a time. If you wanted to monitor every potential threat to the multiverse, to the sacred timeline, what better to do that than some glorified algorithm or a computer program? monitor everything in the past, present, and future all simultaneously. The only other being that would be powerful enough to do that would be someone like the Beyonder, the one above all, and those probably aren't going to be characters that you see on this TV series. 
But I do like the idea that Miss Minutes has sort of become the worst possible version of something like a Hydra algorithm from Captain America Winter Soldier. So what did the Hydra algorithm actually do during that movie? It was built to monitor threats to Hydra. So think about it this way, Miss Minutes built to monitor threats to the sacred timeline. But just like the Hydra algorithm, Miss Minutes starts to go minority report, having a lot of people erased before they ever potentially commit crimes, which sort of goes hand in hand with what happened with Sylvie. Like she's just sitting there playing with her toys. What was the Nexus event that made you erase my timeline? And they never answer that question. So I like the idea. Miss Minutes may have just thought that she might become a threat and then ordered that the other hunters, like Hunter A23, who's Gugu and Bottom Ra's character, go after her and arrest her. But in keeping with the idea that no one is ever truly evil, even Miss Minutes, potentially, or Gugu and Bottom Ra's Renslayer character, they're not killing these potential threats to the sacred timeline. They're just putting them in a permanent cosmic timeout closet. You go to this alternate dimension where you can't cause any problems for all time, always. So you have to imagine that if Sylvie had not escaped, like she hadn't stole Renslayer's pad and gone on the run Doctor Who style, then she would have also got sent to this junk planet. But the big question now, though, with two episodes left, is what's going to happen to all these other Lokis once our Loki and Sylvie complete their mission of stopping the TVA from doing this anymore? The early theory is, is they're just allowed to exist, go do whatever they want, more free will, pursue their own lives without fear of retribution, unless they start committing some acts of evil. Like the ones that survive the finale don't get a total free pass, and there will be a Loki season two, so any number of these alternate Loki variants who survive could always come back. But when you're thinking about big villains, what could possibly be more evil than an algorithm? It'd be like saying the Google algorithm, which is built to make people's lives better, through its actions, even though it wasn't intentional on Google's part, winds up being kind of evil. If you watch my Westworld episode videos, they kind of did this with the main villain or main antagonist on Westworld, where it wound up being like this giant digital consciousness, which was preemptively controlling people's lives, like the MCU's version of Minority Report. So everyone just post all your theories after episode 4. Do you think that this is a minority report situation? I will do a Loki episode 5 trailer video tomorrow. And also, if you didn't see it, there was this huge Spider-Man No Way Home reveal of a couple of his new Spider-Man suits during that movie. So I will do a breakdown and Easter egg videos for those. Make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of those. And congratulations to the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video, Arthur D. Gastino. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone, click here for my full Loki episode 4 video, and click here to learn about the brand new WandaVision post credit scene that Marvel swapped in on the DL and all the changes that they made. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys tonight.